Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Faith and I'm an online fashion reseller selling on Poshmark, eBay, Mercari, and Amazon. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing my buy, sell, trade store strategy and also taking you guys along with me into the stores when I trade things in so you can kind of see how much money I'm making and also how I'm using the store credit that I earn to source higher end inventory that I'm not finding store. If you appreciate the tips that I'm sharing today, please give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe because it really supports my channel. So here is the tea. Here is my strategy for how I source inventory specifically to sell it to buy, sell trade stores such as Crossroads, Uptown Cheapskate, and Plato's Closet. When I go to the Goodwill bins, I'm sourcing inventory specifically for my reselling business selling on Poshmark and eBay. I am also looking for items that I could throw into my cart that would be great to trade into a buy, sell, trade store and exchange for store credit where then I can kind of trade in the not so good items to get way better items that I really wouldn't be able to find otherwise at a thrift store and definitely not at the bins. Now I'm not claiming this is going to make you rich by any means. I'm just saying this is a great way to find higher end inventory and you're potentially getting it for free with items that you trade in from the bins and you're already at the bin sourcing from your reselling business so really it takes not a lot of extra effort. Now before you go out and source inventory specifically to trade into the buy sell trade stores, I highly recommend stopping into a few stores in your area to get a good idea of what the stores in your area are actually selling. I have found for me personally, each buy, sell, trade store is so different in what they sell and what they accept. So it's a good idea to kind of browse around at what is already in their store because it'll give you a good idea of what they're going to be buying or looking to buy from you. One criteria I think that all stores really stick to though is they are all pretty strict on seasonality. They're really only going to buy items from you that are in season, so that's something to definitely keep in mind when you're sourcing. And then also just make sure that you're picking up trendy brands. So think about what the kids these days are wearing. You know, what are the high schoolers and college kids wearing on a day-to-day -day basis? Because that really is their primary audience. So keep that in mind when you're picking up items. So now I'm going to give you a haul of everything that I sourced to trade into the buy, sell, trade stores today. I have 26 items in this bin and I'm going to chalk it up in to say that I, let's just call it each item, I paid a dollar for it. I probably definitely actually paid less than a dollar based off the pound. Like I bought a lot of summer items and so summer items obviously way less. So in reality, I probably only paid like 25 cents for these, but on average, let's just call it a dollar to make it easy. So I have 26 items in here, so I spent $26, and we'll see how much I can get for it. This first item is an American Eagle tank top. It's gonna be summer here. Well, it's kind of summer now, but we're heading into the summer months. So a lot of these are going to be like tank tops and um, fun summery items. This is O'Neal. Forever 21, these mesh long sleeve or short sleeve um, tops are definitely trendy right now thanks to good old Kim Kardashian. This is a Lulu's tie-dye romper. I don't know if this is still trending anymore, but I'm still gonna give it a shot. It's a Juicy Couture velour um, zip-up polyester cutoff mini shorts. These uh, limited jeans, I honestly don't know what that is, but these are uh, Definitely trendier and other perfect kind of cut off shorts for summer. So I'm very confident that they will take these. Zara paper bag shorts. LA Hearts bikini top. This is an American Eagle bodysuit MTV. I actually own this for myself. I know it came from TJ Maxx. The brand isn't really significant. Uh, it's just like this really cute kind of cover up cardigan type piece. Brand doesn't really matter as much uh, for buy slow trades as long as it's a super trendy item. This is Princess Polly. I will sell Princess Polly sometimes, uh, but these styles I just didn't really think were worth it. These are just some straight pull on pants. This is another kind of thing that I picked up because I know it's trendy, but I, the brand is like a, kind of like a vintage brand. It's one of those like grandpa sweater vests that all the little trendy teener boppers are wearing nowadays. Okay, I say that jokingly because I technically am a Gen Z. I was born on January 3rd, 1997. So if I would have been born four days earlier, I would have been a millennial. So I'm like the oldest Gen Z. 
So sometimes depending on the day, like I'll tell people I'm a millennial or I'll tell people I'm a Gen Z, but for buy, sell, trade stores, I'm a Gen Z all the way. This is a, I don't know for sure if they'll take this. This is a Forever 21 skirt with like suspenders. It's like kind of like a layering piece. I thought it was super trendy, but I'm not too sure because it's kind of more like fall, fall, winter-ish. This I know for sure they'll take. I kind of contemplated selling it myself, but this is a Princess Polly uh, crop top, little button up shirt. This is HD in Paris. I think this is like a Nordstrom house brand. I'm not 100% sure, but it's just like this cute eyelet peplum top. This is a kimchi blue blouse. You guys are gonna laugh. This is the second one I've actually uh, traded in with them. This is a spiritual gangster cardigan. And if you know, you know, this is like, um, a lot of people have found this in their Goodwills because it was in a fab fit fun box. I don't know what it's called. But this was in like one of those subscription boxes and everyone basically has donated it to Goodwill and this is the second one I found. And they took it last time. I did pick it up to sell into the trade store and they did pick it up last time. So I figured why not try it again? This is an Urban Outfitters short sleeve wrap top. I don't know if they'll take this. I'm feeling a little second guessing on this one. Uh, it's a Zara skirt. Definitely for sure they're gonna take this. This is Abercrombie and Finch floral romper. Super cute. This is a Zara bomber jacket. It's, it's a jacket, but I still think that they will take it because it's pretty trendy. Uh, this is an Express new with tags, uh, kind of like eyelet lace shorts. These Madewell pants, I was gonna sell myself, but they are oversaturated on Poshmark, but they are this wide leg um, Kelly Dummy Boot pants. I'm not too sure what this brand is. It's probably like a Forever 21 kind of brand, but it's just a stripe. Lettuce trim crop top, and then these Sun uh, men's skinny jeans. So, as you can see, it's a lot of mall brands and I'm more picking them up based off of trends and what I think that they're going to be looking for based off of what uh, kind of like Gen Zers are wearing at the current moment. If you want to go above and beyond, I think it kind of does make a difference what you wear into the buy sell trade store when you're trading things in. I think it's kind of like the first impression. If you go in wearing like super trendy cute clothes, I think that they are going to kind of have the first impression of the items that you're trading in that they are going to be cute and high quality. You don't have to do this. I think it's just one of those like human biases that happen. Um, you're, they're still going to buy your stuff if you walk in wearing like sweatpants and a t-shirt. I don't know. I actually don't know for sure if it makes a difference, but I personally feel like it's just human nature to judge someone when they walk in and what they're going to be bringing in so I personally try to wear something that's like a little bit more presentable and a little more trendy. My personal favorite buy sell trade store to buy and to sell at is Crossroads. They offer you 30% in cash of what they are going to sell it for in their store and then they offer you 50% in store credit which is absolutely amazing. Because they pay their sellers so much they are a little bit more selective about the inventory that they pick up. They are looking more for higher end brands that are also in style and in season. When I'm sourcing at Crossroads I'm making sure that I am very selective about what I'm picking up because the cost of goods is so high. I'm really only picking up items that are on that top tier of my bolo list and that I'm very, very confident about. I found this Ghani blouse. She is definitely top tier. I'll be sure to show you guys everything that I got when I'm done here. They ended up taking the Zara bomber jacket, the Princess Polly crop top, the kimchi blue blouse, the Urban Outfitters top, and then also the Madewell pants and the Juicy Couture zip up jacket. So they took six of my items. Again, it was a dollar per item and they gave me a store credit of $55.75. So I made a profit of $49.75. Not too bad for just picking out some items at the bins while I'm sourcing and then bringing them in to the buy-sell trade store where I'm actually gonna source more items. So I'll give you guys a haul of everything that I kind of picked up. I didn't really pick up that much. I'm making it sound kind of dramatic, but uh, I showed you guys this Ghani top. Oh my gosh, I was so excited to find this. They had it priced at $32.50, and I thought that was a good price for that. I got two stud tops. Uh, they had this one priced at $28, and the other one is extremely similar. They had this one priced at $28 as well. 
super cute. I also got this new with tags keepsake the label dress and they had this priced at $24. It's um, super cute and it's a midi dress with like the balloon sleeves which is super in. And then I also got this Yummy Kim two-piece set. So it's like this floral crop top with matching pants. So, so cute. And I paid $28 for this. So in total, it was like $150. And then I used my $50 credit or $55 credit, whatever, and ended up paying $99 for all of that. So I was really happy with that trip. Now I'm going to go, they only took six items and I mean, I'm so happy with that payout. I think that's amazing, but they only took six items. So yeah, now I'm gonna go over to Uptown Cheapskate and see what they take from what I have left. Uptown Cheapskate is a lot different than Crossroads. We can start with how much they pay their sellers. They pay 25% of their sale price in cash, and then they offer 30% in store credit. So that is a lot less than what Crossroads pays, but they are able to offer their buyers a lower price. They are typically buying lower end brands from their sellers, and that's how they're able to maintain a lower price point. They're definitely less sensitive on brand when they're purchasing from their sellers, and they are more focused on style and seasonality. I found that Plato's Closet and Uptown Cheapskate are very similar if you have a Plato's Closet in your area instead. I found these Jeffrey Campbell mules and picked them up for $19.99. All right, drum roll. They purchased the Hollister denim shorts, the Amber Combi floral romper, these vintage cutoff shorts, the Forever 21 crop top, the Princess Polly pants, and then also the men's Paxson skinny jeans. Just got out of Uptown Cheapskate. As you saw, they took six items and gave me a store credit of $25. So that is a profit of $19. So in total, my profit for both Crossroads and Uptown Cheapskate was $60.75. Not bad. Super, super happy with how that turned out. The stuff that they didn't take, honestly, I'm just going to save and add to the pile of the next round that I take to them because I found that if you take it to them, like by the third time, they'll take your stuff because this just kind of like depends on the demand in the store, the seasonality, like I said, and like who your buyer is. Each buyer has a different style and like everyone has a different definition of what something of what's cute. So I will just bring those back until they are accepted. This was my fourth time doing this. I first heard NCI resale do this when I first started reselling and then Moki Beth has also made a video about it and the Dime Store Cowgirls also talked about it on their podcast. So if you want to see other people's videos or hear their perspective and what they have to say and what their strategy is, definitely go give all of them a follow. If you guys like this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure that you're subscribed. I really, really appreciate it. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one.